Okay. Um, unfortunately, the uh, term homogeneous has many meanings, mathematical meanings. But um, I could tell that some people would like Google a definition. Um, that's what I saw from a few people. My notes. Everything's in my notes. It's all there. Everything I'm going to do here in class is in the notes. Go to my notes first. And when I call them reading questions, it's with the idea that you read my notes. Or a textbook, that's fine too. Well, <clears throat> don't make things less necessarily harder on yourself. Um, okay. Um, 17a, um, you get a quadratic equation for y. Um, and by explicit, and in that case, you can actually solve for y as a function of t using the quadratic <coughs> formula. But that leads you to a choice of plus or minus. And a lot of you may be looking at the answer back of books, so if you wrote down the minus and didn't really display any understanding as to why it should be the minus, it's because of the initial condition, that you get y is equal to you know, something plus or minus something else. Only one of those two solutions will satisfy the initial condition. You use the initial condition to check which one is the right one, and in this case, it turned out to be the minus. So again, I let it slide this time. I won't again. <clears throat> OK. Um, and the last comment I want to make about this assignment. Um, I'm one of those annoying people like the ones you come across in social media who feel the need to, like for an asterisk, and correct every spelling mistake you ever made. Um, so I need to do that with you guys now. All right, separable, not separable. Okay. Uh, I think it's actually the majority of you um, spelled it wrong. <clears throat> okay, so I'm trying to eliminate one of my pet peeves. I will say this is not the only incorrect spelling I saw. And I know you guys don't have it. When you're writing this out on paper, you don't have spell check anymore. But <clears throat> Okay. Now, um, a week from today is uh, the first test. Um, I'm going to try to cover the remaining material for it, uh, hopefully by the end of today, if not like part of a uh, of Friday, and then you have the rest of the time to review. Um, and uh, in the interest of trying more of these active learning techniques that I've been exposed to, I'm going to try something a little bit unusual, at least unusual for me anyway, uh, for this test. So. Um, so what will happen is, um, so you'll take the test on Wednesday, and then um, you know, just, just during class time, and you have an idea of what's, what it's going to look like from a practice test. Then um, when I go to grade them between Wednesday and Friday's class, what I'm going to do is, first of all, uh, if you got the problem right, great. Um, but if I see that you got it wrong, what I'm going to do is point out the first place where you went wrong. Um, and then on Friday, during a very limited amount of time, I'm going to give a test back to you, and you have a chance to try to fix it. Um, now, I'm still working out the particulars, but basically, you know, after you have your mental freak out on Wednesday during a test, then in, and class is over, you turn it in, you have a chance to recover, think about it, and upon seeing where you went wrong, uh, uh, try again. Um, so a little more to say about this on Monday as I try to hash out any more details. But um, <clears throat> so you, you you get a little bit of a second chance, and we'll see how that goes. Okay. Um, now, does anyone have any questions on um, the third problem set? Um, I should point out um, that this is on you know, modeling of first-order equations. Uh, so you're giving uh, three word problems. Ooh. Um, what? What? Okay. Um, and I'll give a few preemptive comments about them. Um, Um, 
first one is number two, and that's similar to the example I worked out in class that involved a tank, which in fact I just ripped off from exercise one that's right above it. Um, and um, the only difference is there's an actual inflow. The example in class, there was zero inflow um, of uh, um, substance you're trying to track the, the uh, amount of. Um, now, in that in case, there's only outflow. Here we have outflow and inflow, but the way you come up with these two terms is the same. You just have different signs, positive for inflow and negative for outflow. Um, so, you, so you should um, use that as a model. Um, last time I taught this, I gave problem six, and you'll be very glad that... Uh, I did not this time. Um, number nine, uh, this deals with the other example. And, uh, but this problem deals with a loan. Um, so what's happening is uh, S is the amount of your remaining balance. Um, so K is going to be negative in this case because instead of adding to investment, you're deducting from a loan balance. Um, and um, the last part of the question asks how much interest is paid. Well, for that, it's going to be because what you're required to do is figure out what K should be in order to pay off a loan in three years. So it would be the number, the lifetime of a loan, so three years in this case, times your payment amount which is k or really k <coughs> minus k. Um, and then you're deducting from it the loan amount of a principal. So everything else you pay during that span of time, that will be the interest you're paying. Okay. Um, and uh, both of these equations are uh, linear equations. We're, we're using the integrating factor and P and Q are uh, constants. Uh, the remaining problem, which is number 16, um, that's about Newton's law of cooling. That is actually a separable <laughs> equation. Um, and uh, so, the, so the form is like dy dt is equal to some constant k, and then... Um, y minus something, and I'll let you look at the problem to figure out what that something uh, should be. So you can see from this that it's definitely going to be separable because it's, this is going to depend only on y. There's no t-dependence at all. Um, so your approach to solving it's a little different than what you do here, but it's still something that you know how to do from problem set two. So, um, so hopefully this puts you guys in good shape um, for that. So, um, uh, so yeah, yesterday when I uh, got here, um, and open up his door, uh, again, was greeted with an avalanche of papers. Um, it's like, wow, this is still going on Facebook. Um, and uh, so now on, that's what I would expect to see on uh, Friday as well. Okay. Okay. So I'll get through what part of this I can today, um, and then whatever time we have left on the, you know, Friday and certainly all of Monday is uh, whatever will help you be ready for the test. what you've seen so far. You've dealt with linear equations for which an integrating factor was needed, and then um, and versus separable equations for which you can just 
Um, and now we're case you're trying to get to some form where you can solve by uh, <coughs> integration. Um, you can think of exact equations, which I'm about to show you, as a more general form of uh, separable equations. Um, and then equations of that form have failed to be exact, but again need an integrating factor. It's kind of like a more general form of uh, linear equations. Uh, the difference is, with linear separable equations, your any coefficients you had were of a very simple form, like maybe uh, like only depend on t and not y. Now uh, we're much more general, so anything in the equation can depend on both um, uh, t and y. And that's why I've been uh, presenting uh, first order equations in general in this form. It's actually been with what I'm covering today in mind. Okay. Um, so if you're looking for a solution of the same formula we've always seen, big F of ty equals zero, and I've uh, differentiated this equation with respect to t. Okay. Um, so, um, so what you do is if you write your equation. Uh, however form, whatever form it's given to you, in this form, we have some function m of ty plus some other function n of ty dy dt is equal to zero. Uh, that way we can match things up. This corresponds to that. This corresponds to that. Um, now, um, so for instance, in the case of a separable equation, this part would only depend on t. Uh, this part would only depend on y. By the way, um, keep track of what is your independent and your dependent variable. Um, your independent variable in this class is going to be mostly t, sometimes x. Um, your dependent variable, uh, usually y. Uh, in the last assignment, one problem was v. Um, a few people got dependent and independent variables mixed up when handling separable equations, so uh, we're back. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> so to solve, and, and I gave this condition a while ago, but it's good to refresh your memory. Um, for uh, a function big F to exist, so that, that describes the solution. Um, we need compatibility of these two equations. Because I have df dt is equal to m, df dy is equal to n. So I um, <coughs> differentiate this side with respect to y, and I get second partial of that with respect to y and t must be dm dy. And then this equation differentiate with respect to t. And I get this second partial respect is equal to partial of n with respect to t. Now, these two are supposed to be equal. Therefore, these should also be equal. So we need this condition um, to, to, to be satisfied. Okay. Now, if it is satisfied, so if you can write your equation in that form, 
involving M and N. So if dm dy is equal to dn dt, or dn dx, if it's an equation involving x and y instead of t and y, um, then the equation m plus n y prime equals zero. Or the way it is often written, like in a textbook, it's m dx plus n dy is equal to zero. Because all, all, the only, all I have to do to get from here to here is multiply through by dx or dt. We say that such an equation is exact. Um, now, to tie this into things you've already seen, um, any separable equation is exact because in that case, dm dy and dm dt are both equal to zero. m and n each depend on the opposite variable. What we're talking about now are equations where these two are no longer zero, but they're still expected to be equal. Um, so if it is exact, so, if it's, so basically you would write your equation in you know, this form or this form, get a hold of your m and n, check this. All right, I think it's going to box this again. I cannot emphasize this is what you're checking. Um, if it works, then you can go ahead and solve it the way I'm about to describe. Um, <coughs> so then, your function big F is the integral of uh, m with respect to t. And the reason for that is here on the upper board that df dt is equal to m. f is what we want. We integrate both sides of that equation with respect to t. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And what's going to happen is you go ahead and work out this integral, whatever it might be, and I'm going to call that m1 as some function of t and y. And then you add on your plus c, your constant of integration, which is not a constant. Um, it's something that depends on, on y. OK. Um, so this is the first thing you do. Work out this integral. Um, this, at this point, unknown. Um, and this comes from enforcing a condition that df dt is equal to m. The next step, um, enforcing the other condition. df dy must be equal to n. Um, so what you can do is you can actually differentiate both sides of this equation um, with respect to y. So the idea is you solve this equation. n, which is what I get from differentiating this with respect to y, must be equal to derivative of m1 with respect to y plus c prime of y. And um, so, you, so you solve this equation. So this will be known, this will be known. You'll work all this out, and you've got c prime of y is equal to some function of only y. If there's any t dependence, or x dependence, you made a mistake. Um, and uh, so what you get is c of y is the integral of n minus partial derivative of my, m1 with respect to y dy. OK. So um, so, so really, it amounts to working out two integrals. This integral than this one. And then you put all the pieces together. <clears throat> um, let's see. All right. Now, that's if the equation is exact. I also want to talk about the case where 
it is not exact. But before I do that, um, I'll give, give an example where I step through this process. You always want it to be exact. Works out a lot more nicely. Whoops, okay. Okay. So the equation in this form. So this is now this function plus this function, natural log of t minus 2. All right, so my equation's in this form to start. Uh, this is a 6. Okay. Now, this is your m, and this is your n. Um, so first thing, question you ask is, Is it exact? So you check, differentiate this with respect to y, this with respect to t, see if they're equal. What is the derivative of this with respect to y? t is considered a constant. Just 1 over t. 1 over t. Uh, because then this part's going to go away because there's no y in it. OK, and derivative of this with respect to t. One over t. So works out. It's exact. So now you can follow what I described earlier. That way, basically, the two integrals. Um, so your function big F that describes the solution implicitly is going to be the integral of m with respect to t. So that's the integral of y over t plus six t. Um, Okay, and uh, what is that integral going to be? <coughs> so this time y is thought of as a constant. Y times natural log of t plus mm -hmm. 3 t squared. Yeah, because you get 6 t squared over 2, it simplifies to 3 t squared. Then you add on. Um, some function, call it c of y. Okay. Um, okay. Now, um, so this over there, this is what I refer to as m1 of uh, t and y. So m1 itself doesn't have a constant integration, but I just add that on explicitly here. Okay, so that's the first integral we need. Then, we solve this equation, n of ty minus derivative of m1 with respect to y is equal to c prime of y. So now we fill in the blanks. Well, n is up here. So that's natural log of t minus 2. And then we need to take the derivative of all this with respect to y. Now, now t is considered a constant. And what is that going to give us? Derivative with respect to y. No. Yeah, because this is like some coefficient, that, a constant coefficient that's multiplying it. Uh, so the thing is, this is really a linear function of y, not of t. So you get just natural log of t. Um, it's equal to c prime of y. And what happens is uh, the natural logs cancel out. This always happens in problems like this. You get some simplification. Any t dependence magically disappears. And that's what happens when an equation is exact. So what's left is c prime of y 
equal to minus 2. Um, so now you can just integrate both sides of this with respect to y, um, and you get um, c of y is equal to minus 2y plus a constant, I'll call it capital K to distinguish. That one really is a constant of integration because now you're de dealing with a single integral, a function of one variable. Um, so now, between this piece and this piece, I can put big F together. So I can say big F of ty is equal to this piece, y natural log of t plus 3t squared minus 2y plus a constant, capital K. Um, equals zero, don't forget to equal zero, um, and what this does, it, it describes a solution y implicitly. So then depending on the form of this equation, you may be able to um, solve for y. Actually in this case you can because the dependence of y is, is pretty simple. Um, the reason for the constant k is if you were given an initial condition, you need the flexibility of this uh, to be able to make sure if your solution actually satisfies the initial condition. Okay. So we're done. Um, so is it exact? Evaluate this integral of your m, and then you get your c prime from this equation and integrate again. Here? Okay, um, this right here? Oh, okay, I wrote it a dy here. Okay. Yeah, because really you get c prime of y equals something, and then that, all I'm running here is now you integrate both sides of that with respect to y. Yeah, so first integral is respect to your, dependent, <coughs> your independent variable like t or x. Your second integral is respect to your um, dependent variable, which is y. Any questions about this one? So we're not required to solve for k in this one. Unless you're given an initial condition, yeah. Any questions? All right. Now, that's for a case where this part works out nicely and it turns out to be exact. What if it doesn't? Um, what you do is you, uh, because this equation is going to form something that's set equal to zero. So you can multiply that equation by anything and still have an equivalent equation. So you, if the equation is not exact, you multiply it by something to make it exact. We call that integrating factor. And yes, it means exactly the same thing as the integrating factor you've been dealing with. It really is the same situation. It's just that the linear equation is of a, a more specific form than what we're seeing now. <clears throat> So, okay. So, in other words, partial of n with respect to y is not equal to partial of n with respect to t. Um, now, in a general case, it may not be possible or practical to find an integrating factor. So we're just going to focus on certain cases um, where it is possible. So we have, um, now in this case, to get you acquainted with notation that's used in the textbook, I'm going to write it in this form. Uh, the only difference is uh, basically I've um, changed x for t. Um, it's important to be able to work with either independent variable. So now I'm going to multiply both sides by some unknown integrating factor u.
And mu can depend on uh, x or y. I don't know which at this point. So we want the new equation to be exact. So what that means is the derivative of a new coefficient over here, which is now mu times m with respect to y, must equal the derivative of this new coefficient, mu times m, with respect to x. So whatever function mu of x and y can bring it about, we'll use. So now we can go ahead and um, apply the product rule. So we have um, mu y m plus mu m y. The left side and then the right side product rule with respect to x. So we have mu x n plus mu n x. Now, this kind of equation would be pretty difficult to solve um, in general if we allow mu to depend on both x and y. So we're not going to do that. Um, so I'm going to make an assumption. Um, I'm going to let mu y be equal to 0. So what that means is mu is a function of only x. So that allows me to dispense with this term. Now, I can rearrange this equation um, to try to uh, solve for, for uh, mu. So, um, so I have, first I'll move all mu terms to the left side. So I have mu times my minus nx. So this part, these are the der same derivatives that we're comparing to check if it's exact. So you already have these. Right? Because if this were exact, this would be 0. We wouldn't be doing anything. Um, and that is equal to this remaining term on the right side, u, x, n. So now I have, um, really, I can think of this mu depends on only x. So I can write this as mu prime is equal to my minus nx over n times mu. So now your integrating factor satisfies this equation. Now with linear equations that we saw a while ago, you had an equation like this. You had mu prime is equal to p of t times mu. So your mu was e to the integral of p. Same idea here. Mu of x is equal to e to the integral of my minus nx over n dx. Um, however, this only works if this expression here depends only on x. Uh, if it depends on both x and y, um, this isn't going to work. Because we need to reduce this to a, a simple differential equation where the only independent variable is x. Okay. So what you can do is, if it's not exact, go ahead and try this. See if this expression depends only on x. If it does, then you're good to go. Um, if it doesn't work, so the alternative, we assume that d mu dx is equal to 0. So now your integrating factor is a function of only y. And if you go back to this equation, and now we're going to cross out this term and keep this one, you're going to go through the same um, algebraic manipulations and you get a similar result that mu prime of y is equal to nx minus my over m times mu of y. So now you have e to the integral <coughs> of that is your integrating factor. And this is only allowed to be a function of y. So in other words, if um, if this expression depends only on x or 
This expression depends only on y. Notice the denominators are different. Um, then uh, whichever one of those works, you can use that as your integrating factor. That will cause this equation uh, to be exact, and then you can solve it the way I described before. Okay. Questions? All right. I'm going to use the remaining time to step through an example. And at least get to the point where we find the integrating factor. If time permits, go ahead and solve it too. So this whole situation of um, having an equation like this that may or may not be exact, that covers every single equation we've learned how to solve in this chapter. <clears throat> and everything we've seen before is a special case of that. <clears throat> okay. So we'll have y dx plus x y minus c e minus 2y. <coughs> y is equal to 0. So whatever is in front of your dx or your dt, that is your capital M. This is your capital N. Um, now, so we checked. Is it exact? Um, <coughs> you could bet on a test. There'll be like one it is and one it isn't. Okay, so you check partial of y, m with respect to y, and partial of n with respect to x. So the derivative of this with respect to y, that's going to be 1. And the derivative of this with respect to x, 2, two, two y. Yeah, y is considered a constant in this case. So these do not match, so um, as expected for this case. So we need an integrating factor. So we check if my minus nx over n um, is a function of only x, or if you negate the numerator, and then instead of divided by n, you divide by m. See, if that is a function of, actually, I shouldn't write mu here. I'll call it uh, g. The point is, because it's not mu, it's mu prime over mu. Um, that it's indicating which variables it's allowed to depend on. Um, so what we do is, well, dm dy is 1, and then nx is 2y. So we have that as our numerator and the negation here. Dividing by n, it's 2xy minus e to the minus 2y. Um, well, that's not going to be a function of only x. There's no simplification that will give you that. So this is not going to work. Here we divide by m, which is just y. And sure enough, that is a function <coughs> bless you, of only y. Um, so now we can solve for our integrating factor. So mu prime of y is equal to this, and um, I'm going to simplify it, 2 minus 1 over y, mu of y. So we solve this equation for our integrating factor mu. And the uh, formula for that is over there. So this equation is linear and separable both. So e to the integral of 2 minus 1 over y dy. So this is one that's a little more elaborate uh, than we normally see. That's what happens in these kind of problems. So um, what is the integral? Two y, minus 2y minus natural log of y. Now we want to simplify this. So here we have a difference of exponents. So I'm going to write this as e to the 2y e to the minus natural log of y. Um, now this part, what does that simplify to? 1 over y. 1 over y, because that's the same as e to the natural log of 
y to the minus 1. The e and the log cancel, and you get y to the minus 1. So now I can write this as e to the 2y over y. So this is my integrating factor. And now I can scale my original equation by this integrating factor. So multiply through by e to the 2y over y. So now I have e to the 2y dx, because the y's cancel. And then I have plus, um, and I'm going to have uh, 2x e to the 2y. And then I'm going to have minus, and then the e to the 2y and e to the minus 2y are going to cancel out. Um, and I'm going to be left with 1 over y. Is there a question? So what are you doing? I'm taking my original equation and I'm multiplying through by the integrating factor. Yeah, so this is mu m dx plus mu n dy is 0. Um, now, this equation is meant to be exact. That's why we went to all this trouble. Um, but it's a good idea, especially if time permits, to check. Because now this is your new m, and this is your new n. Um, do they satisfy um, the condition? So, um, Because before you start evaluating integrals to solve the equation, you want to make sure you're working with the right thing. So what you check is your new m is now e to the 2y. And you take a derivative with respect to y. And then the other is uh, 2x e to the 2y minus 1 over y. Derivative of that with respect to x. So we get um, 2e to the 2y over here, and then here, differentiating respect to x, this contributes nothing, and you get 2e to the 2y. So yes, it is exact. Um, and now you can proceed um, from before. So your function big F describes the solution is the integral of your m e to the 2y with respect to x. Your first integral with respect to your independent variable, well, this, e to the 2y is a constant. So that's x e to the 2y plus some function of y. Um, and then you solve this equation, n, and this is your m1. So n is that whole thing, 2x e to the 2y minus 1 over y minus the derivative of this with respect to y. Well, that's going to be 2x e to the 2y, because now x is a constant. And these are going to cancel. And that is equal to c prime of y. Um, so we um, simplify everything. If minus 1 over y is equal to c prime of y, so c of y is a natural log, minus a natural log. Um, plus of using k. Okay. Um, and all this is on page 32 in the notes. So your solution in implicit form of f of x, y, and sorry, I should have had x, not t whatever your independent variable is, is going to be um, this part here. So it's m1 plus c of y. So that's going to be x e to the 2y minus natural log absolute value of y plus k is equal to 0. Don't forget to equal 0. Um, and the equation is solved, and I'm exactly out of time. Um, so. I've now covered everything that's going to be on the test. 
So we have two full class periods to do anything to get you ready for it. Um, but um, so I recommend starting to look at the practice test. Uh, you can bring your questions about that either on Friday or Monday. Um, we can start reviewing. We can also use Monday for homework questions. So whatever it takes to have you guys in good shape. So it is still just two one for two six, no two four. Right. Okay. But this kind of incorporates two seven a bit. Um, well, actually. Um, Oh, yeah, all chapter two except two four. So, yeah, this I did two six and two seven just now. Okay. Yeah. Oh wait, just two, that's all in two six. Yeah, yeah, two seven is out, not covering that at all.